Hey everyone, Greg Kelly here, writer and director at Creative Clones. Over the years, I've directed and shot quite a few live band performances, so I decided to slap together a video and share my experiences. I'll only be touching on the video side of things, so I'll be leaving the audio to the professionals. Also, due to copyright, I can't play the actual recorded music, but please enjoy this royalty-free background music. Back in 2017, I had the pleasure of directing Waxer's live performance videos at the Tivoli in Brisbane. Waxer are a high-energy five-piece band, so my first task was to figure out how to capture them best and decide on my cameras and coverage. It was a low-budget gig, so I had to compromise with coverage versus cost. So I went with five cameras all up, four of them DSLRs and one GoPro. Three cameras could have potentially been enough. But since I had the five cameras available, both at a low higher rate and free, I decided to utilize them and expand my options in the edit. We had two handheld Canon 5Ds up the front in the pit, either side of the stage. Both operated as roaming cameras to catch the action wherever it happened. Both cameras caught the lead singer moving about the stage, while the camera right of stage caught the lead guitarist and backing vocals and the left of stage camera caught the rhythm guitar and bassist. One Canon 60D stationed on a tripod side of stage to capture most of the band. This was used as a safety camera, something I could cut away to in the edit if the other cameras were busy adjusting between shots. This is what we call a set and forget camera, although we would check it in between songs just to make sure it was still recording and no problems had occurred. Another 60D up high on the balcony, or the dress circle as it's technically known, handheld with a wide lens so we could get in most of the stage and sometimes the crowd. This was also a useful safety shot. Then a sneaky GoPro on a clamp over the drum kit. A nice point of difference compared to the other vision. I was operating stage left, so I was concentrating on my side of the stage. The rhythm guitarist, the bassist, and the lead singer whenever I could get a good shot of her but every so often I'd glance over at the shooter beside me on stage right, and if he was on the lead guitarist, then I'd follow the singer. I say this because it's always good to be on the singer, but you don't always want to double up two cameras on the singer. So sometimes you just gotta stay alert to your surroundings while filming, especially your other shooters, so you can capture the best action. Also, if you have access to the songs they're playing live beforehand, it can give you a general idea of what parts to capture when. Say, you know, when a sick guitar solo is coming up, or the singer is going to hit some dynamic note, then you can be ready for it. Grabbing audience shots is always handy too, if there is a crowd. These can make useful cutaway shots in the edit, and give the video a lot of energy, especially if the audience are into it. You can also grab sneaky cutaways of pedals and general environment shots. These types of shots can sometimes slot in anywhere, it doesn't even have to be the same song. I can't really give any specifics on cameras and such, but manual settings always give the most professional look. Autofocus and exposure can lag and not behave properly in low lit environments, and depending on the lighting design, you might have to keep readjusting your exposure. And remember to make sure that all your cameras are using the same color temperature. A massive piece of advice is to make sure that your filming positions are sorted. You'll need access to mount your cameras well in advance, and to get to all the areas that you want to be able to shoot from. So it's always good to have them sorted early on. We're supposed to be in there. No, you're not. My girlfriend's in there. Hey, a lot of people's girlfriends are in there. Denied. The same goes for lighting. Make sure the lighting tech knows filming is going to be happening. The band, management, or the venue should know who'll be operating the lighting. And chances are the lighting tech may be able to help make the stage more filming friendly. Like I said earlier in the video, I won't be talking audio, but the audio I had here was given to me from the sound desk which was recorded live. So the band took care of this themselves and sent me the mastered WAV files so I could sync their audio with my visuals. Having the audio recording on the cameras made it super easy for me to sync during post. But more about that next. Cutting live performance music is one of my favorite edits to do. I'm no expert in the technical side of editing, so I probably have a really inefficient way of going about it. 
I just dump each camera angle onto my timeline and sync the waveforms of the camera audio to the mastered track. I realize there's multi-cam functions and software that can automatically sync your vision and audio, but I've never really bothered getting into it. Probably just out of plain laziness on my part. But I'm more concerned with the rhythm of the edit, being on the right band members at the right time and making sure that I'm matching my picture pace to the pace of the music. Say the band slows down, I'll slow down my cuts. If they speed up, I'll speed up my pacing. And pacing doesn't always mean cutting faster. If you have a shot with heaps of energy, say the guitarist is thrashing about, maybe stay on it for a while. Let that energy play out. Unless I have a tight deadline, I like to stay with the edit for a while. Do some cutting, decide that I hate it, then take a break, come back to it later, and decide that I don't hate it, and then rinse and repeat. Looking at repetitive pitches can make you go a bit mad, so it's important to schedule those breaks and give your eyes and brain a rest. I usually show my edits to multiple people, say three people, for feedback. Every one of them is going to have a different opinion and feedback, but the important critiques are the consistent ones. For example, if two or three of them say that I've cut too quickly to the lead singer here, or that shot of the drummer is out of place there, then something is definitely amiss. Consistency is key. If you're just starting out, I suggest hitting up local bands and venues and offer to film them for free, even if it's with your phone. If you can get two different angles, say one camera on a tripod or a friend helps you, then that'll be a great practice for editing. Utilize what you have too. One of my first gigs was filmed with one DSLR and two camcorders. One camcorder had a funky color temperature, so I stylized it to black and white, but really, it was just a disguising mistake. I really enjoy shooting and editing live performance videos. Shooting live bands gave me the skills and experience to move on to more professional gigs for audiovisual, theater, and performance companies. Shooting live bands can also lead on to collaborating with the band more, sometimes music videos and such. Plus, you just get to go to a live gig for free. Although you are working, but if you're having a good time, then it doesn't really matter. Hopefully this video helped in some way, so please leave any comments or questions below. Till next time.